Otocinclus catfish or dwarf sucker fish are easily the most mild mannered fish you're going to keep in an aquarium. They even get out of the way if they're in the path of shrimp that want to walk by. They just kind of politely move aside. They are also awesome wee function fish. They keep your plants and some surfaces free of some algaes. Industrious wee fellas, they never stop. So, what's the drawback? There's got to be one, right? Well, some people find them quite fragile and they seem to die off soon after they've been bought and brought home. I've never had that problem myself, just by following a few pointers. So first of all, when you're looking at them in the store, make sure they've got nice dark colours, especially the horizontal black stripe along the middle. That's a good indication of a healthy fish, as is a nice rounded full belly. Most, if not all of these fish that you find in the pet store have come all the way from South America wild caught, and had to enjoy the journey without any algae in the bag to graze on. Probably no feeding either. So if you're looking at them and they've got sunken bellies, that means they're starving already. Probably got associated difficulties and not a great start for them. Assuming you found some healthy ones though and you're happy to bring them home, make sure you drip acclimate them. They can be sensitive wee things. So it's one of those fish that I really would drip acclimate, same as you would shrimp. Then the other thing to remember is these guys are constant grazers. They need an amount of algae and a wee bit of biofilm for them to do that. So they should only be added to an established aquarium, a tank that's been set up for a wee while. It should be fully cycled as well. They prefer pH from about 6.5, 6.8 to 7.4. If that's swinging about or you've got ammonia and nitrites, that's going to cause them difficulties. Choose them carefully though and add them to an established tank with a temperature between 72 to 82. And you're going to have a lovely wee fish that's going to live for about four years roundabouts. It doesn't need to be a huge aquarium for these guys. They only get to about, well, maximum two inches, but I don't really see them over 1.5. That's comparable to a large cherry shrimp when you think about it. So, I mean, bigger is always better, but I would say 10 gallons and upwards because the other thing is, these guys are social fish. They're a schooling fish and they feel much, much more confident when there's a squad of them. Safety is in numbers and that's where you're going to see the most relaxed fish and the most natural behaviour from them. Folk will say then, get four or six is a minimum i say get as many as you can getting as many as you can afford and as your tank can sustain is going to reward you with a beautiful display of these joyful fish so we said they're going to clean some algae off of your plants and some of the other surfaces in your tank including snail shells believe it or not but we need to supplement their diet we can't rely on that being enough for them they are pretty much exclusively vegetarian though, they don't enjoy protein. So, algae wafers we can offer them and also blanched vegetables. A particular favourite appears to be courgette or zucchini. So obviously a planted tank is essential for these guys, it's a must. However, hardscape that provides retreat options, not so much. You are far more likely to find them hanging out on a leaf somewhere than you are hiding away in a cave. For tank mates, the usual applies. If there's a fish that can fit an otto in its mouth, it probably will. So, no overly large or aggressive tank mates. However, these are one of the few fish that I have been able to keep better with and have completely ignored them and pea puffers without any problem at all. Some cichlids as well. The likes of angelfish and cribensis, which can be a bit boisterous at times, especially if they're breeding, just don't seem to pay these guys any mind. It just appears to be an accepted thing that these are the nice guys of the aquarium world, and no one seems to bear them any ill will. A lot of people are gonna pick these up because they are so well renowned for eating algae, not every algae, of course. They'll not eat black beard algae, for example. You need Siamese algae for that. 
Certainly the brown algae get on plants. A team of them will make short work of that. They can clean up a tank in no time if that's the case. But I do feel like these fish are interesting and endearing. And we'd really like to think that people buy these guys just for enjoying them in their own right. They are shrimp safe, snail safe, fish safe, plant safe. And just lovely wee characters to enjoy.